Hello everyone, welcome to Blue Dragon Actuarial. And as you have seen in the thumbnail, this video is related to discount rate, discount factor. Now this week, I was wondering what topic I should uh, present for the, the YouTube channel. And I was talking to my teammates in Blue Dragon Universe. And Parul actually suggested this, that why don't you make a video on discount rate and discount factor? Because in her experience while interviewing, this is one of her interview question and many people kind of give wrong reply to this and that's why we thought that let's make a video and then while preparing this i thought uh, in one of my interview question i someone i asked someone that what is the difference between yield and coupon and that person gave a i, I don't know very very different answer from what is the correct answer so i thought let me also address that uh, in in this video right so this is a knowledge video by the way uh, we are going to launch uh, the cp3 course on 15th of august and like all our courses it will be a weekly course it will be updated weekly but cp3 is a very small paper uh, in fact when i cleared cp3 i just studied it for six days and i don't suggest that that you only study it for six days and clear the paper but uh, it's is is that i mean it's is a it's an easy paper uh, however you have to be good in communication Right, you need to know what to write and what not to write, right? And if you like, I personally believe if you are honest, your communication automatically will be correct. And and if you are technically sound, once again, your communication will be very good. However, if you are not like for the you know for that word, the paper actually, if you are a paper actually, if you have just done papers in your life, then clearing CP3 will be very difficult. And that's where I have seen many people get stuck in CP3. Because they are unable to, you know, communicate the technical knowledge. Unlike other paper, uh, this paper would be difficult to clear for people who are lacking in the technical aspect, right? So uh, that's why CP3 is a small paper. If you are good, so everything that you have done up till now will help you in clearing CP. But coming back to the topic, uh, what is discounted? And I also have an, a small announcement for the actuaries day, uh, which we have, we are we are planning something related to blue dragon universe and also related to actuary so that announcement would be the at the later part when this video is done so here we are considering an example which is in excel right and many people sometimes message me about giving this excel to them and till now i've done that but i think i'll stop doing that practice because the whole idea is not to spoon feed people if you can understand this on your own if you can create this uh, so the approach that i'm going to follow from this time onwards that you create your own excel right and if you are asking my excel then you have to send your excel to me so that that will show that you have you know put forward your effort and then when you have already done that then i can share my excel with you so that you can understand whether the you know, the excel that you have kind of prepared is correct or not right so but you have to work hard first then you can ask for the excel right uh, otherwise, there is no point because otherwise I am spoon feeding and I am aiding the building of you know paper actually. Anyways, so this is the problem in hand. So there is a bond, right, which is which have a phase value of thousand. So that means that uh, the bond will mature in some time, and at that point of time, you will get hundred a thousand dollar. In this case, thousand dollar, thousand rupees, whatever it is, right. The thousand is not. Uh, like not payable by the bond right now but at the maturity right so that is very very important distinction you will get thousand when at the maturity right and the coupon value is that the, it will pay four percent now can this four percent change like every year maybe one year it will four percent maybe one year another year it will be five percent it cannot change right because this that's why these are called fixed interest securities bonds is bond is a fixed interest security because this interest is 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 kind of uh, fixed right now this means that you are giving money or you are lending money to someone or some company right who is going to return you this at an supposedly interest rate of kind of four percent right that's exactly what this means so if you uh, take a loan like when you take a loan you pay interest to the bank right similarly in this case someone is taking a loan from you so you are paying that person some amount we will see what that amount is in a bit and for that, that person is paying you the interest. That interest rate that the person is going to pay is four percent, and that four percent that person is again going to pay on the face value, right? Or at this value, one thousand, right? Now this is the discount rate, 
that I have assumed every this is a 10 year bond and every other discount rate is changing. The first year the discount is 7%, then 5%. This these are in percentage, right? Then 6%. In this way, it is it is changing. Ignore the YTM right now. Uh, I'll come back to the YTM concept. So you can see these are discount rate, these are changing. Usually these are uh, you know kind of set by what is the uh, you know the discount rate or what is the yield for the uh, zero coupon bond, right? So what do you mean by discount rate? A simple definition is suppose in one year you will be uh, expecting say thousand, right? Thousand and uh, once again suppose you are expecting an interest rate uh, of uh, maybe six percent, right? So what is the amount that you need to deposit today to get to that? Uh, that would be the discount rate, right? So in this case, it would be this value thousand divided by one plus this one, right? So that is your discount rate. So today, if you deposit 943 in a bank, which is giving you 6% interest rate, then after one year, you will get thousand, right? So that is why these are called discount rate. Now discount rate means you are looking uh, backwards, right? You are looking from this point. You are looking from one year, hence, right? You are not looking at today's, uh, today's uh, time, right? If you are looking from today's time, that if you are looking forward, then that is called interest rate. Right, because you will be getting this interest rate. So this 943, uh, when multiplied with 1.06, that will give you 1000, right? So when you are looking from today's date to the future, that is called the interest rate. And when you are looking from the future date to today's date, then that is called the discount rate. That is why uh, when you are looking from today's date to future, it is getting multiplied. And when you are getting, when you are looking from the future date to the today's date, it is getting divided, right? So that is why, uh, these are called discount and interest rate. I hope the distinction is clear, right? Now, many people struggle in that concept, although they uh, score 83, 84 in same one. That I have seen that, right? Hence the definition of paper actuaries. But now I hope that this is very, very clear to you, right? Now, I have uh, in doing the calculation, I have you know kind of plotted this in this manner uh, so that instead of having a vertical table, I have constructed a horizontal table. So, here 1, 2, 3, 4 to 10, right? discount rate is coming from here now this is in order to calculate the one plus like the you know the final factor i need to add it one add one to this so this is the one plus uh this factor like a6 which is this one by seven in this way it is getting is being calculated if i just do a f2 you can see that one plus i6 which is five uh, by 100 so so that i can calculate the entire like i get the entire discount uh, rate right one plus the discount rate. so here you need to be clear that this is the discount rate the interest rate right when you look in the future it is also called the interest rate and when you look from the you know the when you look from future to the current value to the present day that is called the discount rate so th that is why it is this is the six percent is a discount rate, but that is the entire you know the, the amount or the number with which you discount is the one plus that discount rate, right so that's how you get to this number right now that what is the discount factor? Discount factor is basically one by this number, one plus uh, the discount rate, right? So one by one plus this number, one plus one point zero seven. This is the discount rate. One by one plus zero five. This is the discount rate. Uh, this is the discount factor for year two and for year three. Similarly, right? If I do an F two, you can see this very very clearly. I think that is also clear, right? So one by one plus discount rate, that is the discount factor. That is the difference between discount rate and discount factor. Discount rate can be like in, in percentage, if you write in percentage term, it can be greater than one, right? But discount factor cannot be, it is a decimal thing and it would be because it is getting divided by one, right? And it is always supposed to be greater, the denominator is always supposed to be greater than the one like this, 1.07, 1.05, 1.06. 1 it cannot be greater than one, right? Until and unless uh, you are kind of deducting this one, right? One minus discount rate, something that happens in deflation scenario. But let's not go into more complication. This is this is the discount rate, right? Now, what is cumulative discount factor? Because you want to calculate it today, uh, the present value of today, right? What is the value that you have to lend to that institution today, right? So for that, you need to calculate the value of the cash flows on today's date, right? Now this is uh, the first discount factor. The first, the, this is the this is the cash flow that you are getting on the uh, on maybe one year hence would be forty. How you are getting forty? And we'll come back to the cumulative discount factor. But just let's just first understand the cash flows. 
how you are getting 40 40 is this multiplied with this this is the coupon right so that is the first interest payment that that institution will make to you uh, or the interest payment that the institution will make to you then this is the next one because the coupon rate because it is a fixed interest equity coupon rate cannot change right uh, however it can change if it is an index linked uh, security because that then it will depend on the index right but for a fixed income security it will not change right so uh, in this case it will be 40 40 40 for the ninth year and the 10th year you will you are also getting the coupon payment as well as the this amount the 1000 which is the face value that will be paid back to you right so this 1000 will be paid to you right now you want the present value on today's day right on today's day. so this means that this 40 has to be divided by the current discount factor or multiplied with the current discount factor right so this is the 40 right and that is getting multiplied with this one or this one in the, in this case also this these two factors are same right however for the next year because you want it at today's day if you divide if you might or if kind of if you multiply 40 with this one you will get it to uh one year you will get you will get the discount rate at year one right you will get the number discounted by one year right so that's where you will get the number the present value at the end of year one or at the start of year two but it will you will not get that value at the end of year uh, zero right or at the start of year zero right so that is where we are using the cumulative discount rate so this is the discount factor right then you are multiplying this two factor because it will be double like one by 1.07 into one by 1.05 right so that is the two uh, double discounting is happening so that you get it to the today's day, right? Because if you divide only by 1.05, then you will get to the uh, end of year one, right? But you will not get to the end of year zero, right? Basically, which is the starting point, right? So in that, that is why you are calculating the cumulative discount factor. So that is why cumulative discount factor is the multiplication of this, right? Similarly, this would be the multiplication of the uh so this 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 factor is the multiplication of so the, so just to ex explain like if you come here uh, this two this is the same factor right and this factor is getting multiplied right so this is the cumulative one now uh if i remove this then th this is the cumulative factor and with that the year three discount factor is getting multiplied similarly if i go here this is the cumulative discount factor up till year three and with that the year four discount factor is being multiplied so that you get the value at t0 right at time equal to t equal to zero that is why we are multiplying it otherwise we'll get the discount value at the end of year three uh, or at the end of year two or at the end of year one but in order to get the value at t equal to zero like at today's day we have to multiply we have to calculate the cumulative discount factor right i think that is clear so in this way now 40 is being multiplied with the cumulative discount factor this 40 is multiplied with the corresponding cumulative discount factor we are not multiplying it with the discount factor mind you but with the cumulative discount factor and i think the reason is explained right and if you have any difficulty you can write in the comment section to understand right but i hope that is not the case right so in this way we get 870.67 which is the sum of all of this right so this is t equal to zero time value this is also t equal to zero value this is also t equal to zero value this is also t equal to zero value so you sum all of this so right now you have to pay 870.67 right and in return the company or the institution will pay you 40 40 40 every year for the entire 10 years and on the 10th year this uh thousand will also be paid right so right now the company is taking just 870.67 right so you are not paying the company thousand right the, you are paying the company only 870.67 or 871 dollar or 871 rupees and in return you are getting uh, this interest because that is your benefit right because you are taking a chance on the company so that is your benefit the company has to pay the interest so the company is paying 40 40 40 40 for 9 10 years and also the initial amount which is the thousand right instead of 870 their company is paying you thousand right this is this is a bond which is issued at a premium right the company can also uh, pay you only 870 that is bond issued at par right so there are this you know this distinction but today's you know session is not related to bond uh, is just an example is related to discount rate so i hope the discount rate is clear now what is the difference between coupon 
and and yield or or the discount rate. So yield and discount rate are the same thing. Yield is the return, basically the return that you are generating, right? Uh, Sometimes some year you are getting seven percent return, some year you are getting five percent return, some year you are getting six percent return, some year you are also getting four percent return, right? Why this return is changing? It, it depends on the economic condition, right? If the you know, quantity easing, quantity tightening, RBI governor increasing the rate. Fed governor decreasing the rate. It depends on all of those economics, right? So that's why the return changes. It keep keeps on changing, right? So, but the coupon cannot change because it is a fixed interest security. As I mentioned, if it is an indexed in security, then the coupon can change. So, coupon is basically the interest paid to the bond holder, but yield is basically the return that the bond holder is generating because he or she had lent the money to an institution. Now, instead of having seven five six six seven four four. Can you have a const, constant interest rate? Because that is simple to explain. Then that interest rate is called yield to maturity. The yield that stays constant for the maturity, like coupon. Like coupon here is 4%. It is constant. Can you have a yield that is constant uh, till maturity? Right. And in order to do that, we have to use goal C. Right. So let us uh, just assume that that yield is maybe just I'm putting 9%. Right. So you will see that 9 is going everywhere. 99999 nine, 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 nine. and in that case this is the value that i'm getting right so i need a value that would that yield that would be giving me 870 because then mathematically that is the same yield uh, like that is kind of you can say the average of this uh, yield that we are generating here right the average of this yield right so in this way it it works right i think instead of putting the percentage i should put my because otherwise this will create a mismatch. This is how the value is calculated, right? So instead of uh, that's why I was uh, I think may let me change this to a number, right? Or to each nine, right? Right. Now it uh, looks normal, right? So this is I am assuming this is nine is the uh, yield to maturity, but obviously that is not. You can see there is this is eight seventy, this is six seventy nine. There is a difference, right? So what I can do in order to get a consistent uh, constant number that will mathemat that is mathematically what you call yield to maturity because that yield stays the same till maturity, right? That's why the name yield to maturity and uh, that will give you this value, right? So in that case, we'll do goal six, right? How we'll do goal six? So we'll go to data and then we'll go to uh, what if analysis, right? Then goal six. So set sell. Now, if you have purchased my, you know, CP2 course, I have mentioned that always, you know, uh, like uh, you set the value in such a manner, you take the difference in such a manner that it, it will be set to zero. This value will always be zero, right? So this is 870 minus 679. That value is captured here. And I am setting, changing that cell, which is R24, right? I, I, I want this cell to be zero. And which cell should I change? I should change this set, right? So that, that would give you the correct date. Let us see if this gives you the value or not. Right? So this shows that if you get six, right? Let me okay this. This is six. Or if you see, you want to see the decimal, this is 5.74. So you can say that 5.74 is kind of an average yield that you have got for the next 10 years, right? So instead of seven, five, six, five, six, six, if you are it's almost equivalent to getting a consistent yield of 5.74, right? So then that would give you 870.67, which is the uh, right, which is the which is the present value or which is the amount that you are lending to the institution, right? So this is, I think, that should sort any difference or any issue that you have with the discount rate. That right? discount rate is basically the interest rate looking backward, right? And then what is one plus discount rate and what is discount factor? Why we require the cumulative discount factor? Uh, what is the phase value, right? And at what is the is the amount that you uh, purchase or a pay for a bond? Is that equal to the phase value? It's obviously in this case, it is not, right? So you pay a lesser amount, right? And then it depends on the institution, what amount they are going to give you, whether they are going to give you the phase value or they are going to give you lower than phase value or higher than phase value. In this case, they are giving higher than phase value. That is why it's bond issued at a premium. And then you come to the yield to maturity concept, right? Yield to maturity is the average yield that you, that, that is, that you are actually generating, right? This is the actual return. Like for 10 years, 
this is the return that the bond holder is generating, which is 5.74% in this case, right? Instead of saying that one year you are getting 7% and 5%, you are generating 5.74%. And finally, can the coupon change? It cannot change. That is why it is called fixed interest security. However, uh, if it is an index link mode, it can change, right? So I hope this concept is clear. If this concept was troubling you and right now it is clear, uh, then I think I deserve a you know, like in the YouTube. If you have any confusion, please write it in the YouTube comment section. I have mentioned this time and again, do not message me LinkedIn with a YouTube videos. Keep the affairs of YouTube limited to YouTube only, right? So comment in the YouTube section and I'll comment back, right? And uh, share this with your friends, right? And finally, to the announcement, so I think maybe on Independence Day or uh, maybe one day before, uh, in my LinkedIn, I'll kind of post uh, a questionnaire which would be related to uh, anything that you want to know about actually or maybe uh, Blue Dragon Universe, right? Uh, it has to be related to actually or maybe if you are interested in trading, about trading, right? Uh, about irrespective, I mean, just just do not ask any question about my personal life. I will not be answering those, right? So ask. So basically, it is the Blue Dragon Universe team who uh, pick the questions about actuaries, about actual profession. Uh, you know, uh, we already have a free course, right, uh, related to actuary. But if that is not sufficient, whatever you want to ask, right, uh, about trading, about coding, right, whatever you want to know about actuary, you can put that. In that questionnaire, I'll load that question on Monday, maybe Monday, and uh, uh, we'll uh, next video will come on Sunday, and we'll take those questions and we'll answer those questions. If the questions are getting repeated, then we'll pick the question which is more exhaustive, right? Uh, so that it will be a slightly longer video, but I think all those questions that you have, those frequently asked questions about actually trading, coding. Uh, whatever, right? Machine learning, artificial intelligence. You have some questions, I will try to answer those, right? Or my team uh, will uh, try to answer that, right? So, thanks for watching this video. Uh, see you in future videos.